Hi, everyone. Welcome to the June 2018 edition of Farsight's Time Cross Project, where we use remote viewing to predict the major news events the month before they happen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Courtney Brown, director of the Farsight Institute, and in this edition of Time Cross, published on YouTube at the end of May 2018, we have the predictions for June 2018, as well as a recap of how well we did in April 2018. Now, as of the recording of this video, May has not yet finished, so we will recap how well we did in May at the end of June. Before we begin, let me remind you that last month we published our first cryptocurrency three-month forecast, and that was for Bitcoin where we published predicted high and low prices, both high risk and low risk versions, using remote viewing in a new experimental design. We even updated the forecast a few days after the initial publication with additional analysis. Now we are using an ability with Vimeo to update videos from time to time. And of course, everyone who purchases the original analysis gets the updated one for free, where the second version is simply swapped out for the first, something that is allowed by Vimeo and which has allows us to update our video publications when necessary or useful, which is really cool. On June 15th, we will publish our second cryptocurrency three-month forecast, and that will be for Litecoin, another of the big cryptocurrencies. Now remember, we are using a new experimental design for these forecasts, one that resolves the problems associated with using associative remote viewing to predict digital outcomes, something that a lot of other people like to do, almost always unsuccessfully. I have often spoken and written about what I consider the theoretical flaws inherent with associative remote viewing experiments in general, so we do not do associative remote viewing or those types of experiments here at Farsight. So as a scientist, it has been a big deal for me over a period of a great many years to sort out a different approach entirely. So our cryptocurrency project is a full-fledged experiment of such a new approach one in which we have tested the major parts over the years, and now we get to pull everything together so that everyone can see how it works in a fully fleshed out project. Now, as I mentioned in our last edition of Time Cross, if you are not an investor, and if you are only interested in seeing how remote viewing works in new and interesting applications, simply wait until the three month forecast period is over for these cryptocurrency forecasts, and we will publish the forecasts plus an analysis of how well we did on YouTube for all to see for free. Investors who are interested in remote viewing applications to economic elements will want to see the forecast before the forecast period is over, obviously. But if that is not you, just be patient for three months. And just to be clear, no one at Farsight is a licensed financial advisor, so anything that anyone at Farsight does that relates to using remote viewing to predict economic outcomes of any type, including the selling prices of cryptocurrencies, is done for entertainment and educational purposes only. Everyone doing investments are doing so at their own risk. These are experiments in remote viewing, and there are no guarantees being made, either explicit or implied. Nonetheless, these efforts are truly interesting on a grand scale, and I personally believe that the totality of these efforts will finally lift remote viewing out from the fringe of society into the mainstream. It is my belief that after we do this for a while, it will be hard for anyone to ignore the reality of remote viewing. June 15th, Litecoin. One more piece of interesting news. We have just started our newest mysteries project. It is going to be amazing, folks, just like our other mysteries projects. Just know that we are working on it and hang tight until we are finished. These things take a while. Also, I want to personally thank all of you who are watching our latest mysteries project, Moses Beyond Exodus. That plus our other recently released mysteries project, The War in Heaven, have turned out to be big hits with lots of interest in the live remote viewing. If you have not seen those projects yet, or if you have an interest in any of our other amazing mysteries projects, head on over to our website and take a look at the trailers. They are fascinating. A collection of totally unique and interesting projects. There is nothing like Farsight anywhere else. Now on to Time Cross. We start with a recap of how well we did predicting the major news events in April 2018, and then we move on to the new predictions for June. Now remember, 
we use a four-point scale to evaluate each news event. A three means that the predictive news story was really good in accuracy and detail in terms of describing a future news story. A two means that the news prediction happened and the description of the event was solid, but it may not have been as complete as it could have been or perhaps it had some relatively minor errors. A one means that the news prediction did happen, but the description had too few details or too many errors. And a zero means that a remote viewing predictive news story does not appear to have happened. And remember that there are two basic elements involved in each of our news reports. The first is the actual visual and other perceptions that remote viewers have involving physical elements and activity. But the viewers also try to interpret those perceptions, and the interpretations are done with the conscious mind, not the remote viewing mind, so to speak. So they carry greater risk of being wrong. We use our same four-point scale to rate the raw perceptions and the interpretations separately. So we get an idea of how well we did with the raw perceptions matching the physical elements of a major news story as listed in our news analysis table each month, which you can find on our website, as well as the more risky interpretations of those physical elements. Again, two ratings for each news story, one raw perceptions and two interpretations. And you can enjoy trying your own hand at interpreting the raw perceptions as well each month and seeing how well you do. April 2018 was a really interesting month for our Time Gross project. We had five news stories from three remote viewing reporters. The biggest news story of the month, according to our news analysis table for April, that again can be found on our website, was the poison gas attack in Syria. At least 70 people were killed and many more were injured. It was truly an awful event. Well, as it turned out, the report by Rock Arkey was a very close match to that event. He clearly described the explosive nature of the event plus the cylinders involved in the event. He also reported on smelling the gas. News reports have reported that the cylinders were yellow in color and pictures of the cylinders are available on the internet. So the cylinder component of the event is clear. Rock also described the event as happening in an urban area where there was lots of transportation. Now, understand that Rock is relatively new to our Time Cross team of reporters. His session was really good, but you will see as time goes on that as he gains more experience doing this, his reports will keep improving, filling in the blanks with respect to describing the events. But this is a great hit for him, an explosive gas attack involving cylinders, it happened, and he described such an event. Since that is the largest news story of the month, it is clear that this is the event that is associated with this remote viewing report. In terms of his raw perceptions, this is a clear three. But the interpretations could have been a bit clearer, and some of the details could have been spelled out a bit more. For example, to note that this was a wartime event. So we will score the interpretations as a two. Next, Melina Hall had a really interesting remote viewing session in her first report. I want to use this report to point out some general aspects of remote viewing that happened so clearly in this situation. Melina reported on an event where a major political leader was making a speech, addressing serious controversy and conflict, a new age, a new beginning, a new approach. This event had a distinct French feel to it, and she clearly sensed that it was the national leader of France giving the speech. Her illustrations of the event were priceless. She even had what looked like the Eiffel Tower in the session. Well, as it turned out, French President Emmanuel Macron did give a speech that very much matched what Molina described in terms of content. Moreover, he gave it very near a tall, pointy structure like the Eiffel Tower, and it was a huge news item in April. However, this event did not happen in Paris. It happened in Washington, D.C., and the tall, pointy structure was not the Eiffel Tower, but rather the Washington Monument. On April 25, 2018, President Emmanuel Macron gave a major speech to the U.S. Congress. He did not give it outside, but rather inside the Congress building, which is right next to the Washington Monument. Now, this is how things sometimes work with remote viewing. Melina sensed a distinct French feel to this event. She even sensed the French president, and she sensed a tall, pointy structure, and she tried to put things together as best she could. 
In terms of what we like to call low-level data, Malena was correct in describing the French president making a major address with the content Malena described, and all this happening next to a tall, pointy structure. There were some errors as well. The interpretation errors involved the country and the fact that the speech occurred inside rather than outside. Also, she described a violent element at the event, such as an attempted terror attack, and this never occurred. So, given the absence of the violent element and the fact that the speech occurred inside rather than outside, we will score the raw perceptions as a 2. Similarly, given the location was Washington, D.C. rather than Paris, we will score the interpretations as a 2. Still, this is pretty good. Given the French nature of the event, these interpretation errors are understandable. Next, Princess Jeanne described what she felt was a huge earthquake that caused massive destruction to structures. Well, the second biggest story of the month involved the attacks that occurred in Syria. Specifically, the United States launched massive missile strikes on April 14th in response to the Syrian gas attack that occurred earlier on the 7th. So that was the event that Princess should have described, and she got the destruction perfect. But she did not perceive the destruction as the result of missile strikes. That is, she did not see the missiles. So she deduced that this must have been the result of a massive earthquake or some natural event. But her description of the magnitude of the destruction really did not match that of an earthquake. Princess clearly described something that seemed like an earthquake in some respects, but mixed with something else, something that she could not pin down. An earthquake shakes and the buildings fall down. She described essentially explosive energy coming up from the ground that tore the buildings apart. So an analyst who focused only on the low-level data would probably have picked that up and questioned whether the event really was an earthquake. Now, she did describe a dry urban and peaked topography correctly. She described the skin complexion correctly for the general population in Syria, and she described accents and other languages, all correct. But she could not decide if the event was in another country or in the United States, and that is an interpretation issue. In such a situation, her raw perceptions of the event were great, but she did not perceive the cause. So we will score the raw perceptions as a two. This led to a misinterpretation of the event as a natural event rather than a man-made event, so we will score her interpretations as a two as well. Next, Melina Hall described a major wind event in a very large urban area, possibly involving wind comparable to that which is associated with twisters. Now, it is rare that a straightforward wind event makes the news. But as it turns out, that is exactly what happened in Canada on April 4th and 5th. In the provinces of Ontario and Quebec, especially in the cities of both Toronto and Montreal, there was a major windstorm that had winds of over 90 to 100 kilometers per hour. It was very unusual for Canada. There was over $85 million of property damage and massive power outages. Again, the key to this news story was that it was just wind, really strong wind. So that event we will score as a three in terms of both raw perceptions and interpretation. It is worth noting, however, that while this storm did obtain widespread news coverage, it was not covered extensively by our four featured news outlets for this experiment, something that again points to the limitations of the breadth of much of our mainstream news, which is why we extend our search for news events beyond just CNN, both editions, the New York Times, and the BBC. Given the financial pressures that news venues are under these days, it is understandable that they tend to limit the extent of their coverage in many realms. So there is no one-stop shop in the news business these days. Finally, Princess Jeanne reported on a major protest that takes place in a beach city. It is warm with music, dancing, mixed vibes. It is both a rally and a protest. Now nearby buildings seem mostly made of stone. There is some violence at the event as well. Now, the trouble is that there were a great many protests in April covering a broad range of issues and situations around the world, some of which resulted in major news stories. So this report is difficult to pin down in terms of a single specific event. Given this ambiguity, we will score this report as a one in terms of both raw perceptions and interpretations. 
Well, that wraps up our time cross results for April. And now on to the June 2018 predictions using our current time cross team of remote viewing reporters, all done and published at the end of May 2018. We have five great reports. Let's begin with a report by Melina Hall, where she seems to report on what may turn out to be an unusual type of terrorist event. Today I will be exploring target 36124474. So I'm going to get a, a land water interface. It's very hot here. I can feel the breeze as well, but it's very hot here. Um, I hear a lot of noises, a lot of nature sounds, like sound of birds, like you could hear them like fly. Um, This area, it smells so, like you can really breathe here. Um, this seems like a beach area. I'm seeing sand, lots of sand. This is like so much sand here, but there's water. This feels like a beach here. Um, moving around, lots of subjects here. I'm seeing like a lot of pretty blues, um, nice ocean blue, like you just see the ocean, you see the waves, I'm hearing waves, I'm hearing people, activity amongst this whole beach is very nice here, very peaceful. Um, again, there's a lot of subjects, so it is pretty talkative here, a lot of playing, a lot of activity here. So. It's a nice day here at the sandy, nice sand. Like the sand is very perfect here. It's so beautiful. You pick it up, it feels so rich. The sand doesn't feel like it's really sand, but this is how sand's supposed to feel like. Just shimmery and have that greedy feel. Um, the water feels very good and it's cold but the sun is hot, um, it's very hot here, a lot of heat waves, but the breeze from the ocean, it feels so delightful here. Um, I'm seeing structures in the far distance because there's like regular topography in the back, I'm seeing like rocks and hills and the, in the back of this whole beach area, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like a secret beach. Like this is not the beach people go to. It's more somewhere near home. It's a family beach. It's a neighborhood beach. This beach seems um, just very private. So it's a lot of private beach, I mean, but uh, there's more of the area that's people live in goes to this beach kind of like Jacksonville Florida well, I couldn't say Jacksonville Florida this feels like as I go to the subjects these subjects um I'm getting a lot of tan complexion darker complexion and they look Hispanic and Latino. It, this feels like another country because the surrounding is so filled with a lot of rocks here, a lot of hills and uh, cliffs kind of sort of around this beach area. This doesn't feel like a Florida beach, but it's more of a lot of um, different races here than the regular whites and black i mean they're there but it's more of i'm seeing a lot of more hispanic people and and uh, I'm, I'm seeing different type of this feel this could be south america as well
But yes, there's plenty of subjects here today, and everything seems so so happy here. A lot of lot of families, a lot of people here, and it seems like a celebration or whatnot on this beach. Um, Seems a lot of suspicious activities as well. Move on along. Um, let's look around. From below, I'm seeing subjects. The beach, I'm seeing all the flat land, all the nice surrounding. Um, like I said, there's structures here, but they're like kind of far from the beach. The city is very far from this beach. This beach seems very isolated. It's like a, it's kind of wide, but it's very a uh, location where not too many people go to, but only the people that stay around there. But there's pl plenty of people here today at that. Plenty of subjects here. Above, just heat, breeze, temperature, um, winds, not too much activity from above, but a thousand feet up. Water, a full body of water. I'm seeing. I'm seeing the city there. The city is very nice. It's so antique. Like it seems so historic. The city is built very like huge, and it seems small from a thousand feet, but it's very big as well. So this city seems pretty, pretty lit. Um, hmm. Now, moving on. I'll go one mile each direction. So one mile to my right. I'm just seeing land water interface, water subjects here, but water here, one mile here, water. One mile to my left, land and water so there's basically water here and then a mile behind me sand still there's the structures which the structures are not big structures just smaller structures like shops and things to do around this beach area uh, so yeah so this basically a nice beach area very nice location beach that not too many people go to only the people that live here and around there can be visitors that come here because it's a lot of people out here and it's a lot of vibes going on it's just so many so many different um they're definitely party i'm hearing a lot of the rhythm and a lot of a lot of talking and noises here um but i'm getting a strange activity something is is having me sweat and feeling very hot even though it's hot there i'm i'm feeling panicking um let me go one hour before and one hour after So it's a perfect day here, um, nice weather, like everything just perfect, everything is nice, the sun is out, the sun is feeling good on people's skins, everybody just loving this weather today, um, nobody thinks nothing can go wrong, I mean it's just so much happiness and joy here at this beach. <sighs> So I'm seeing a few subjects here. Um, they seem to be blended in with the rest. They seem to be, um, I wouldn't say drunk or not because I couldn't tell from a distance, but I'm seeing a focused gathering here and there. And I'm hearing a lot of rattling and noises and it seems like an argument in front of me. And let's go into this. Um, 
So these subjects, I'm getting to feel like they're pulling out a weapon or somewhat. But I mean, I'm hearing noises too. I'm hearing gun noises, like pop, pop noises. But it's they're shooting. They're shooting in the air. They're not shooting at people. And people are running away. Um, this got out of hand. You, they brought weapons here at this beach around a lot of people. Um, this is not normal. Um, and one hour later, a lot of subjects are dead. I'm seeing a lot of emergency lights. And people are leaving the scene. Like, people are... It's like nobody's on the beach but dead bodies. This is like a massacre shooting on the beach. Um, it went from playing with a gun, obviously, to starting shooting people. And people are running for their lives um, at this point here. People are running, like scattering everywhere on the beach. Just run for your life. Like, just pop, pop. Keep, I keep hearing the gun noises. Um, it feels like one person, actually. And then it felt like a, a altercation, um, an argument. There's so many people. I'm getting the sub one of the subjects' faces. Um, this guy. So here, I'm seeing this guy on um, one of the suspects. Um, He's in his late 30s. Um, he has very thin, curly hair, though. Dark brown. Brown is brown in the sun. Um, dark eyebrow, very thick, and oh, just a full face with hair, beard, mustache. Um, and his eyes look so tiring. Um, his eyes look tired. He seems very exhausted, the subject. He he doesn't he loves the beach but he doesn't love a lot of people here. Anyway, he came with other people here and it seems like he had gotten into an altercation with another person on the beach. Or it seems like they came and they're drunk and they start pulling weapons out. And I'm also hearing other noises as well. Um not just regular gun noises i'm also hearing things even in the sand like i'm also hearing like other noises like like i'm seeing a lot of sand and dust being blown so it feels like not also a shooting on the beach it feels like also a like a bomb on the beach i i'm not sure i'm getting like the i'm getting movement from below and and just activity and a lot of Running around me is so much going on. Let's look. Yes, I'm getting this loud explosives feel like somebody, um, somebody bombed or put something in this beach. Like, like something, something just went kind of loud and bursts of sand and smoke so it's dusty people are running um and they're shooting as well this is like a freaking a freaking war out here on the beach um because there's so much going on like and there's so many people running and falling and don't know where to go you can't really see too much especially if you're in the middle where the the dirt and the sand just came up from this bomb like because i mean i'm seeing shooting but i'm also hearing loud a loud noise it feel like only one bomb though um i don't i think there was a setup or it was planned already 
and this isn't funny. I'm now thinking it was a group of people that came and set this all up to to fool people, to fool everybody there and make it seem like there was just some fun, drunk people, but it obviously was not a fun thing to do. This is like the first like beach shooting or beach massacre because um, several people died and lots of people were injured. Um, you can see the blood on the sand. This is a crazy Target ever, and this has been Target 36124474. Next up, Princess Janae reports on a rocket launch that ends badly. Four, 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 two, three, one, four, four. Uh, my basic thoughts here are land, structure, and movement. I have uh, multiple structures. It's a nearby city, very level topography. Um, I see a lot of subjects. There are, there are uh, about a crowd, like a many to a crowd of subjects, and they seem very focused. Um, there's a non-surface structure that's emitting energetics. Um, bright light, heat, object, uh, heat coming from the object. Um, it seems to be moving in an upward, diagonally, in an upward motion. So it's not falling down, but it's definitely moving in an upward direction. Um, I see extensive foliage. Um, it's an urban environment with structures. Um, <clears throat> the dominant element is a non-surface structure, though, but that's the, that is what's on the ground here. That's what's down here. I hear sounds of roaring and very loud, um, <clears throat> loud sounds. Um, again, the non-surface structure seems to be going in an upward motion. And there, there's subjects in and out of the surface structures. <clears throat> the reason I feel this is a focused gathering is because everyone is looking is looking at the non-surface structure. Um, now I know that in that NASA doesn't really do rocket launches anymore, but it kind of feels and, and looks like a, a NASA thing. Um, something goes wrong, something is going wrong, and now the non-surface structure just it, it explodes. There's fire in the sky. There, um, the structure breaks into pieces, falling down. Uh, the subjects on the ground are shocked, and they're frightened, but they they don't get they're not hurt or anything. Nothing has caused harm to the people. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to look into the cause of the explosion here, or what could have possibly made that happen. It, it, it feels like um, the cause of the explosion seems to be an electrical problem here with wiring, maybe. Um, <clears throat> Again, I don't necessarily know, but that's what it feels like to me. Uh, it seems to ignite gas, and the object has sort of a white, silver, and black color to it. Uh, there, there's, there's a design to it. It's very, it's got pointed top or whatnot. Um, this is near a very large city, but the exact location where I am is very secluded. So it's like a city, uh, it's like a city is surrounding wherever this location is. It's very secluded, it's empty space. There's a few structures around this 
central area and then a large city and foliage surrounding it. Let's continue with a report by the newest member of our Time Cross team, Rock Arkey. He has lots of detail in this report, although you will see that he struggles a bit to tie it all together. It looks like a complicated event. Welcome to Time Cross. My name is Rock Arkey, and I'm here to uh, deliver my uh, June Time Cross iteration target 40115645. All right, I'm getting a sense of, uh, on the sight line, I'm getting a sense of cylinders, storage uh, containers of some sort. They're, uh, they're bound or enclosed with steel, um, protected by the steel. Um, feels somewhat industrial, and this area feels protected. All right, this, this one seems pretty straightforward. I'm getting a, an undulating mass, heat or hot, sense of uh, a flow. The smell is somewhat uh, caustic. Um, yeah, well, I know everybody's watching um, what's going on in Hawaii, and certainly there's a, a lot of remnants. I'm not going to plug a guess here, but, but I'm getting an undulating form, a flowing form. It's hot, it's caustic and there, there's motion. Let's see what else we can find here. <clears throat> and there's been so much news that, uh, you know, the remote viewer will pick up, possibly this is an AOL, it's an analytic overlay from uh, being deluged with this uh, this information the past uh, several several weeks, but let's uh, let's go ahead and probe further. All right, this is pretty straightforward. There's pressure being applied at two different directions or angles, and it's creating stress or fracture point at this point of inflection. That's, that's what I'm sensing, that's what I'm seeing, just a, a general impression of, of stress, stressful forces that's causing um, a real problem there. Let's go see what else we can find. I'm picking up a coastal line, onshore, offshore. Offshore, slightly near the coastal line, I'm getting a, a floating uh, debris field or a, a big mess. I'm, I'm sensing airy, salt, ocean, but there seems to be a, a lot of debris in this, uh, in this area of the ocean. And I mean debris, like it's not like, um, maybe it's not like natural. I'm getting a sense of, uh, as in the previous frame, I'm getting a sense of a debris field, but this debris field is, uh, is near hills, a flat area, and this is uh, a little more concerning because the degree, debris is chunky. In other words, it's, uh, it's pieces of something. Is it pieces of an aircraft or uh, um, something else? I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm definitely picking up uh, debris, scattered debris as if in a, a wreckage or a crash. Uh. <clears throat> this one is, uh, is pretty powerful in that I'm, I'm picking up, um, and I'm gonna call this Life Human One. I'm getting a sense of people like surprised, tumbling, really out of whack, but, but in motion. Um, I'm also getting a sense that they're in motion in some container, though, um, and that the container may be, uh, be out of control, but they're generally surprised, in a panic, distressed, um, really an out of whack situation. Um, Let's, let's pursue this. All 
Uh, on my initial probe, my sight line, I got three columns. Um, and then there's a top on those three columns. Large, get a sense of a large structure and immediately clipped to the potential of an AOL. Um, uh, as people may or may not know, there's a potential meeting in, in June. And um, I have seen that structure before. Let's go ahead and just see what else we can find here. That's sort of interesting. Let's, let's go back into this. All right. Um, I took another read on this, this structure, and now I'm getting a, a sight line on looking out, up and out of uh, what, we would con what you would consider a dome or a dome structure, glass-like. It's actually very beautiful looking out of that. You can see the, uh, the sky and the elements and stuff. Let's take another sight line. On this last sight line for, uh, <clears throat> for the target here, I'm picking up, picking up what seems to be a promenade. Um, the interesting thing about this, this promenade, I'm, I'm looking through what appears to be glass and as I look through it, on the sight line, I get uh, the horizon or the ocean in the distance. So this is up at a height, looking through maybe uh, safety glass or some kind of protection. Um, yeah, that's what I'm picking up, so. All right, on this probe, I got a sense of, uh, of uh, a high speed or ultra high speed projectile. And I say projectile because I don't, I don't sense anything, uh, any propellant or, or, um, or push other than its initial launch, if you will. But this projectile is moving fast. It's hot. Some of these pictures aren't that exciting, but uh, I'll try to depict what I'm seeing. All right, what I'm picking up post that projectile is uh, actually a gaping hole. Um, and it seems to be complex damage in either a structure or a craft. But um, maybe yes, maybe no, maybe the um, a result of that projectile, most likely. Um, let's see what else we can find here. Well, this one's pretty simplistic, but I'm getting uh, a downward a sense of downward spiraling lines, a sense of downward spiraling lines to a point of impact on the grounds. Thank you very much. That's my Time Cross June iteration, target 40115645. Next, Melina Hall reports on what may turn out to be an assassination attempt. Now, I want to emphasize here that I think there are major interpretation issues with this report. I do not believe that this report relates to anything that will actually happen in the United States or anything that would relate to President Trump. The very fact that we are reporting this news story means that any event of this nature relating to President Trump will not happen since national security would see our report and stop the event. Well, I cannot prove this to you, in my educated opinion, Rest assured that the United States National Security watches our Time Cross News show and they take it seriously. So what you are about to see, in my opinion, has interpretation errors. The probability is that something like this will happen somewhere, but it will not be in the United States and it will not involve President Trump. But whatever happens, wherever it happens, it sounds scary. Watch it and then let us wait and see. Today we'll be exploring target 273170054. I'm hearing noises already. Um Let me see. Lots of subjects are here. I'm getting this base surface, level topography. I'm seeing structures, but it's like more land in this. I'm seeing a road here, 
but I'm seeing the structures like kind of not too far from the road, but it's not, it's more of like foliage and grass and, and then it's road and land and then structures. So it's kind of like a wide spread. Um, and it's just really this section here um, because in the other sections around this corner of this area, the structures are mostly close together. But this area, see, I'm like I said, I'm hearing a lot of noises, the activities. Um, it, it doesn't feel like a big city right here. It mostly feels like a mm, a town. So, um, like I said, I'm seeing a lot of subjects. People are in casual wear, um, and the subjects near the row are like in uniform. Um, a lot of people, this feels like a celebration. Um, if there are subjects in uniform and subjects in regular clothing, therefore there's security here and it seems like a big event. Um, so I'm hearing noises, uh, rhythm, like uh, band noises, um, but the band is not playing like regular high school marching band music or like, you know, football band music. But it's like an orchestra band. It's playing like politics music, um, presidential type of band, like theme song. So this feels like a sort of event where people are passing by. Hmm. Let's look around. Here I see subjects, vehicles, and then structures, of course. But the structures, like I said, the structures aren't like they're close. It's like a structure, it's a structure here, and then across the street, you see another structure. But it's more like like I said, not near the street, but it's there. And you also see balconies. These structures, these structures have balconies. This kind of looks like something you'll see in New Orleans, the way the town is like, and the roads, you're getting a, a I'm getting a feel of, um, like this is like the top part of the structure and then the I'm saying subjects here it's like subjects are everywhere amongst this street and road or whatnot and um like I said vehicle subjects because it's like this whole celebration is passing by it's like a it's like a parade but not to I want to I, I don't want to push on parade because it's like it's people passing by like a happy funeral which that doesn't sound that's that doesn't sound good but and it doesn't sound good um yeah I, I don't know a happy funeral but people in New Orleans do have nice music playing uh, for the honor of whoever died, but I'm getting that feel of the structures and the balconies. Um, there's also structures like that in Texas and um, I believe like neighborhoods in New York, people have balconies in their neighborhoods and standing and watching from below, but I couldn't just assume New Orleans. This does, this does feel like a different country, of course, um, cause the town looks, it's the structure kind of looks Southern and old at the same time. Um, it's very vintage and historical here. Like I said, so much activity here, so much hype and music rhythm and the colors are red, white, and blue. So it gives me a presidential, um, view of this place, of this, uh, event and therefore, <laughs> Um, okay, moving up. 
Um, nothing really above, just um, spirit, a good um, energy above and a thousand feet up from what I see in the distance, water. So there's water here. This this area has water in the distance and also a city here because the town is very close. Um, so now let's move back and forth because I'm getting a suspicious feel in my heart because like the music is so like the music is nice. Like I'm hearing like trumpets, I'm hearing drums, like people are marching, yelling, um, and it's it's a lot of whites and red and blue. Um, it's different colors. People came here in casual wear. I'm I'm also getting like people wearing masks. Um feels like some type of political party celebration. A lot of people are walking up to the event to see um, the people who's passing by. A lot of people are like happy. I'm seeing a lot of balloons. Um, it's like an outdoor presentation. Um, people are here to uh, celebrate and see who's all are moving past by. Like It's like dark vehicles. I'm seeing motorcycles. I'm hearing a lot of just a lot of vehicles are going past. It's not, it's so many cars, it's like it's a race out here, but it's not a race. It's, it's just because it's moving in a certain pace where you can see things in it, but they're also moving. It's like they're rolling, like they're driving in a pace where it's like you got to, you have to see whose that is. And, um, and it does look like a presidential movement the way everything is all like all the cars all the vehicles are in black um so the music gets louder you can hear the like i said orchestra band like i said it, they're playing music that's that that's appropriate for the theme of this whole um parade um or celebration or whatnot and it sounds like it's getting louder like it's it's like the energy is just amping up like everything is amping up like people are are like so caught on to things that are just going by and one hour after she so those were not firecracker noises. I'm hearing definitely bombs, like. <sighs> I'm hearing sh shooting, and it happened so unexpectedly. It's like those attacks were mostly towards the event, not necessarily the crowd, but I'm getting a um, smoke bomb in the crowd and I'm getting, I'm feeling bullets coming towards these vehicles. Um, this is unexpected and <sighs> feels like an assassination. So the initial moment of this whole target activity, it just seems very slow-mo and I'm getting a lot of white people, a few blacks amongst the whole crowd. Um, a lot of happy, happy people here, like a lot of crowd yelling and shouting, people are having a good time they're celebrating something here um it could be for a upcoming war and it also could be um something new and new changes new changes in the world it could be anything new changes in the office anything could be something there's these people are out here 
and rallied up for because it does feel like a pet rally because people are excited. People are injured. I'm getting injured subjects. I'm also getting people who got hit by the bomb and hit by gunshot, even though it was towards the moving vehicles. It was towards the the people that was going past by. Like I said, this is, seems like a repetitive and more more deadly than the JFK shooting because not not one person got shot. Four other people got shot in the whole midst of this energy. Okay, so this is target 2731-7054. Finally, Princess Shanae reports on what appears to be a major wartime event, probably in the Middle East, involving tanks, parachuters, the works. This could possibly involve Israeli troops. Six, five, one, zero, three, eight, one, four. Um, this is very level topography. I have land and structures as well as my basic gestalts here. Um, the structures are on land. I see a lot of clout dynamics. Um, this is a very urban area, like a city. It's located near water. I see water. Um, I see a lot of subjects here. There, there are very many. They're all over the place. Um, the base surface, uh, mostly men in uniform is what it looks like. Um, there are a lot of non-surface structures here. They're hovering. They're, they're not necessarily fully like flying, but they're, they're a little stationed, but they're definitely moving here. Um, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of popping. I'm hearing a lot of roaring, booming. I hear explosives, energetics. I'm seeing energetics. Um, I hear voices shouting. Just, it's just a lot of commotion, a lot of sound going on here. Um, I see a lot of steep peaks. I don't know if they are mountains or part of the buildings that I see, um, but I definitely see some pointed peaks here. Again, there's subjects everywhere and movement everywhere. Um, just movement, energetics. Again, I'm hearing and you're seeing booming. Um, Subjects in uniform, water, um, foliage, you're all the way around um, with a nearby city. Um, the land in the foreground here is very brown and sandy. Um, again, with the greenery, the foliage out around and the water. Um, city up above. It's so like you can see it from here. You can see all of that ascending. Um, the place is coming apart at the seams. It's so much going on here. Uh, uniformed men are everywhere. Again, lots of small structures. Um, this feels like a war zone. And I'm gonna move to the initial moment just to get a better view of what is going on here. The initial moment of what's happening. And I'm seeing a lot of Men dropping out of the sky, uh, big trucks with men, aircrafts in the sky, um, tanks on the ground. I see tanks and somebody sent all of these men here. Somebody sent them here. I'm going to move to the origin, the original cause of things. Um, I'm feeling some type of missile. I feel some type of bombing or bomb going on here, a sense of anger. Um, this, is, this is on TV news. Uh, the TV news is involved. Um, I see fallen men and women and a lot of death here. I'm going to do a walk around just to see more of who's here and what's here, the type of people that are here, see if I can get a feel for where I am.
There are two sides going on here. Uh, the uniformed men appear to be Western or American in some sort. Uh, the other side, the people have more brown skin, like more brown skin. Um, I feel like I'm overseas. Um, I, I also see, uh, I'm thinking like Western American or, or Israeli type of people going on here. But again, the other side have more brown skin. Um, I'm hearing accents. I'm trying to pick them up. And I, I really feel like I'm overseas somewhere. I feel like I am somewhere in the Middle East here. So that is it for the predictions for June 2018. You will be interested to know that we are currently working on a statistical analysis of our time cross reports dating back to May 2016, so stay tuned. Also, I hope you get a chance to watch our new mysteries project, Moses Beyond Exodus, one of our most amazing projects ever. And please remember to watch some of our other recent mysteries projects, such as the just released The War in Heaven, and also Tunguska Complexity, Remote Viewing Area 51, the Roswell UFO crash, the investigations into the 9-11 events, the assassinations of John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King, the psychology of Adolf Hitler, and some amazing explorations into UFOs and extraterrestrial life. As always, all Farsight remote viewing work is done by highly trained remote viewers working solo under totally blind conditions with no communication between any of the remote viewers. So, Farsight projects are nothing short of amazing, and there is nothing like it anywhere else. And remember that when you watch our Mysteries projects, you are helping us at Farsight do our work, including the funding for our Time Cross project, which we offer free to the public, but which costs us a few thousand dollars to do each month. We have no other significant sources of income to pay the bills. So you really help when you follow and watch our activities and research. Without you watching our projects, we would not exist. Finally, remember, please, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Farsight Press, to keep up with the latest. You can find information about all of our present and past activities on our website. Also on our website, please sign up for our free email newsletter, where we announce all of our major projects. The email newsletter is actually one of the best ways to keep up with all of our activities. Stay ahead of the curve. Let the mainstream fade in the dust. Be there now.